All right, today I want to walk you through a projectile motion problem uh, where we take a ball and toss it at 20 meters per second horizontally off the top of a 30 meter high cliff. And in this problem, I want to walk you through how to solve for the horizontal distance that this projectile or ball is going to travel through the air. And I also want to show you how to solve for the final speed and direction that the ball is going to be traveling when it lands on the ground over here. Now before we get started with our math over here, there's a couple of important concepts we need to discuss. The first being that projectile motion is really defined by or characterized by the idea that when something is in projectile motion like this ball right here, it is subject only to the force of gravity. Meaning this ball, even though it's thrown horizontally, is only going to be accelerating downward. And so what that means is as this ball moves through the air, its horizontal velocity is never going to change. But as it's moving through the air, vertically it's going to be speeding up as time goes on. And what that means for us in practice is that in order to analyze the motion of this ball as it travels through the air, we really need to take the motion of the ball and break it up into two axes, the horizontal and vertical axes, or the x and y axis. Now anytime I'm dealing with a projectile motion problem, what I like to do is lay out a table listing the kinematic variables for both the x and y axis. So you see we have displacement, initial and final velocity, acceleration, and time for both axes here. If you've seen the kinematic equations before, these variables should be familiar to you. It's just now, rather than dealing with, say, a car driving in one dimension down the road where we only have five variables, because this ball is moving in two axes, we now have ten variables to deal with. And the biggest issue in dealing with projectile motion is making sure we keep these two axes separate from one another. I always tell my students, it's a bit like your wife and your girlfriend. you got to keep them completely separate. Don't get them mixed up. Now, just like any other kinematics problem, all we're going to do is take the information given to us in the problem and plug it in over here in our table. You see, in this problem, we're trying to solve for the horizontal displacement. That is the displacement in the x-axis. We know the ball is going to start at the top of the cliff and land down here on the ground, meaning vertically it's going to move down 30 meters. I'm going to say that's negative because it's downward. Now our ball was tossed at 20 meters per second horizontally. And so we have to be a little bit careful over here on our table. You see the ball moving entirely horizontally is going to have a horizontal component of velocity that's 20. Meaning this velocity is entirely in the horizontal axis vertically it's not moving at all. So we're going to say that initial velocity in the y-axis is zero. Now we don't know the final velocity in either of the axes, but looking at acceleration, remember projectile motion is characterized by the motion of an object which is only under the influence of gravity, meaning horizontally the acceleration is going to be zero, and vertically the acceleration is going to be 9.8. And that's downward, so I'm going to say that's negative. Now the only thing these two axes of motion have in common is in fact time. It's impossible for the ball to be moving horizontally through the air longer than it's moving vertically. So it's time's going to couple these two things together. Now with what we've set up here, as long as we know any three variables in either of these columns, we can always solve for the other two. So if we're trying to solve for the horizontal displacement of the ball, we don't have enough information in the x-axis, but looking at the y-axis, we can solve for the time it's going to take the ball to move vertically 30 meters. So using the displacement equation and then plugging in the numbers only from the y-axis, not the numbers from the x-axis, just the y-axis, into that equation we can solve for the time it takes that ball to move downward these 30 meters. And we find it takes 2.47 seconds for the ball to move from the top of the cliff to the ground. Now that 2.47 seconds is the same 2.47 seconds that the ball is going to be moving horizontally for. So if we know the ball is moving at 20 meters per second, the whole 2.47 seconds, again using the displacement equation, we can plug in our values and find the ball travels 49.5 meters horizontally. So now that we've solved for this horizontal displacement, uh, let's turn around and solve for the final speed and direction of this ball when it actually strikes the ground. 
Now, when this ball strikes the ground, this speed is really made up of two components or two parts. There's the horizontal motion of the ball as well as the vertical motion of the ball. And if we can find each of those two final velocities, we'll be able to combine them using vector addition in order to find the total speed and direction. Now, since the ball was moving initially at 20 meters per second horizontally, that's never going to change, which means the final velocity in the horizontal axis is 20. That's pretty easy, but in the y-axis, we're going to have to do a bit of work here. But knowing the time, as well as the acceleration and initial velocity, we can use the kinematic equation, vf equals vi plus at, and plug in the necessary values, and we find the final velocity of the ball is 24.2 meters per second, downward. Meaning we now know both the horizontal and vertical components of our final speed. So looking at this as a right triangle and combining these two components, we can just plug these values into the Pythagorean theorem, and we find the final speed of the ball is 31 meters per second. And solving for this angle, we know both an opposite and adjacent side of this right triangle. So we can set the angle equal to the inverse tangent of 24.2 over 20. Now, whether or not you toss a negative in here on the 24 is up to you, uh, but realize when you actually solve for a result here, we're going to find our angle is 50 degrees, and that's below the positive x-axis. So there it is, how to use the kinematic equations to solve for both the horizontal range as well as the final speed and direction of a projectile. So I hope you found this useful, and on that note, that's all for now.